Hey y'all, it's Nikki back here again with another video. A speed build, and I'm going to narrate this one. And hopefully this will be a little bit more positive than the last narration. Will that make you happy? Hope so. So I was walking to the pharmacy and back. And it hit me just so suddenly that the very strong desire to make this build just slapped me in the face. I just felt the longing for my grandparents so much. It was everything I could do not to cry while I was shopping and when I was walking home. By the way, this driveway situation irritated me throughout the entire build. I will go back to it like three times at least. Here I am trying to deal with some land stuff, trying to make the driveway fit. Anyway, um, this house, which still exists, uh, was sold after my grandma died. She lived to be 98. That's amazing. We've got good genes in our family. Too bad I'm adopted and I didn't inherit any of them. But she did teach me how to cook. And we'll get to that in a little bit once we get into the kitchen. So I'm here trying to look at pictures that I found on the internet and trying to use my memory to come up with this. And I had to go fight with debug to find the perfect tree. And these shutters, man, they're from not even shutters. They're something else. For some reason, I couldn't get them even though they irritated the crap out of me. And now I'm finding fences and railings that'll match together so that I could make the rail. But again, I'll fight with the front for ages. We also need better garage doors. Maxis, if you're listening, we need garage doors and matching gate railing fence combinations for like all the gates, fences, and railings that exist in game. Please. Thank you. You'll see me jump back and forth for maybe a room or two while I'm trying to remember things because this is all done by memory except for some minor things that I found on Zillow from when the house was sold. And I'm messing with this kitchen. Uh, this was the strongest memory though, was the kitchen. And so that's where I started, when I started working on the interior. It wasn't a very big house. It was a rancher in Columbus, Ohio. We went every Christmas and this is the house that we stayed in. The weird thing about this house is that there is this spot where the wall is really low, but it has like spindles that would be on a staircase. They were very decorative, but I couldn't find anything. So I had to use these poles for some reason. I can't remember what they're from. But the kitchen. My grandma taught me how to cook. That's when I was fighting with matching wood colors. Maxis, help us out. Huh? And now she had a little table in the kitchen that was right there. And there was a trash can, little trash can, underneath of that table where the chair is missing. And so there was no chair there. So that was done on purpose. All of these weird things that I'm doing and how spartan it looks is very deliberate. I didn't do a lot of clutter in this build and adding little weird extra things because they didn't have those. I used a little bit of artistic license because there are limitations and things that are not available in Sims 4, but for the most part I tried to keep this as it was, not how I would like it to be 
or how I would normally build a thing. Because that was not the purpose of this build. The purpose of this build was a memory. So I finally found a window that I liked in the front. And now I'm working on my grandma's room. This is where she slept. They slept in separate bedrooms. My grandpa was a snorer, but they were together for 70 years, I think. He passed away when he was 98-ish, and she also passed away when she was 98, but that was like seven years different. Maybe less. I don't know. He was born in 1916. She was born in 1919. I can't remember exact ages. I just know that she died when she was 98, which was two years ago. It was right after my wife passed away, like a month after. And I was already still dealing with her stuff and mourning that. And then my grandma, who I was always very close to, and my grandpa, was, I was very close to him. But he died several years before that, so I was, I've gotten used to him not being around. Over it, no. Period. But I've gotten used to it. Just as I'm starting to get used to her not being around either. Except for in my memory. I'm working on this living room. See, there was that weird cut through with the spindles from the kitchen into the living room. And I can always remember that. My brother and I and the other kids, my uh, cousins on my mom's side, her sister, Her kids, we all sit in the living room while grandma would, and my mom and Aunt Barbie would start preparing for Christmas dinner with some side dishes. Maybe they'd start making mashed potatoes a day early because leftover mashed potatoes are amazing. They would work on some of the other things like my mom would make an incredible broccoli salad. My grandma would make glorified rice, which was like a rice pudding, very eggy. And I'm going back and forth with room sizes and wall lengths because as things get built, I can remember more and more about what was there, how big it was, and get a better idea of it. Because I haven't been back to Ohio in 15 years. I haven't stepped foot in this house in 15 years. Um, in the living room, there was a little pantry closet and at the bottom shelf there was a box of VHS tapes that us kids would play. Uh, there was a lot of Peanuts, you know, Charlie Brown and Snoopy, a lot of Disney stuff. And I was trying to remember and try to figure out how to put this weird little end cabinet there. It was a hanging cabinet from the top, but it wasn't all the way down. There was just a regular counter beneath it, and there was a space between. And that's where all the breakfast things were, like cereal, a sugar bowl, a beautiful blue glass sugar bowl with a lid and a little spoon. So beautiful. How my grandpa and I would stay up late. We would eat cereal, or he'd make us oatmeal, because we were both terrible insomniacs. We knew it. We just accepted it. He was like me. He's like, there's no point in forcing it. I'll fall asleep when I fall asleep. Until then, we're going to have some cereal and we're going to chat and we're going to have a good time. And so we did. 
Now, in the larger area of the living room, there is the wall where I put the two bookshelves. There was a bookshelf on either side, and there was a beautiful fireplace. And that wall was all wood, dark wood paneling. It was stunning. And there are two bedrooms here, and then there's a really weird laundry room slash bathroom. That is the only experience I've had with the laundry room being in the bathroom. So it's still it's such a curious thing when I see people put that in their builds. It's like, huh, weird. And I have to tell you, when I walked through this, when we came into the kitchen, I just gasped and I held my breath. Because it's like, oh my god, that is my grandma's kitchen. But I'll show you in the walkthrough slideshow. There was a mantel clock on her fireplace. I couldn't find a fireplace that looked appropriate enough. And that vase, I had to increase the size a little bit and put that where it is. It, used to, it was a tall wicker basket vase with branches of pussy willow. And there was this interesting concrete um, enclosed deck. It was just screen. There really wasn't a lot out there. Sometimes we would bring a table, like a card table, and some chairs out there, but usually it was empty, so I didn't put anything out there. And that bedroom with the double, with these two beds, they were always mismatched. So that's very intentional of what I did and why I did that. There was popcorn ceiling everywhere. I wonder how much asbestos was in that house. <laughs> Between those two beds was a sewing machine, but we don't have sewing machines and Sims yet, so I just put in a really cool desk. That reminded me a bit of it. And then there is a side table, and there is a really interesting little lamp with little crystals on it and a turning key. I think it was refurbished from an old oil lamp, maybe, or an old gas lamp where they had keys. And there was a closet in there, and at the top she always had yarn, and sometimes we would crochet. She would teach me how to crochet. She taught me how to cook, and she taught me how to crochet, and she taught me how to sew. And I still love to cook, crochet, and sew to this day. So there was like this triple width thing with a sink on either end and there was a toilet with a thing, a caddy over it. That wasn't what we had available, so I did what I could. And it was yellow and weird. <laughs> and then there was this alcove thing with accordion doors that you could pull from either side to meet in the middle to close it. And it had a table there for folding and the laundry baskets were there, and there was a whole bunch of shelves, and then there was the washer dryer. And in the bathroom, there was a television on one of the machines, and it faced toward the mirror, and you could see it from the bathtub if you were watching through the mirror. That was fun. So this is my grandpa's room. He was very literary. He loved to write. He wrote the genealogy book that was published. It's also in the Library of Congress. And he learned how to use the computer and email at the age of 93. I remember teaching him and he used to email me all the time. We would talk about the book that he was writing and luckily it got published. Before he died, he was able to see that. He was able to make that happen.
and now I'm working on the outside as I take a break from inside. This was done It was done, the build, in probably two days, three or four sessions, a couple hours at a time. I tried to cut this down so it wasn't a 45 minute video, because nobody wants to watch a 45 minute speed build. And now I'm sitting here trying to figure out how to best display this garden situation. My grandpa loved to garden. He taught me how to garden. He taught me the love of oatmeal, late night cereal, and gardening. And there is some azaleas over there and some beautiful flowers. on that side and then the other side was more low-lying flowers. There weren't window boxes like this, raised beds, but this was the best way for me to present it. So this is where I took some license to present the home and the front in a better way, also to hide the little lump of land with the driveway creation. And as you see, I had to deal with the driveway yet again. Oh God, that was the most irritating thing ever. Now I'm doing my plant preacher things with all of the plants. So many plants. If I put it on a bigger lot, I could do this little garden that he had in the back. I don't know if any of you have ever had ground cherries. These are little cherries, like the Chinese lanterns. They're very closely related. And you open up the little paper husk and you eat the little fruit that's inside. It's a little berry on a ground vine. It's so delicious. That has such a subtle flavor. It's like tangy, but sweet. It was so good. We just ate them right out of the ground. We didn't have to worry about pesticides or anything like that, because Grandpa didn't use those. He was an organic gardener before it was a thing. It may have been Spartan up in the living areas, but where do you think my grandparents put all of their stuff? In the basement. So I was trying to represent the basement as well as I could, which is kind of difficult because there was this raised area. It was a crawl space and it was filled with gravel. And my grandpa would hide little boxes of coins, of foreign coins, of domestic coins, of value, because he knew we would go play in there and he wanted us to find it. And he wanted us to have this gift. He did it on purpose. He knew we were going to be in there. But he wanted us to have these and to save them. It was kind of like an investment, but playing at the same time. He knew that was the best way to give us these. And us finding them like treasure because that gave him so much joy. It was like a little treasure hunt. We knew it. And he knew it. And we loved it. And now my grandpa, this is where he originally had a word processor, you know, just after the typewriter. It was electric. You plugged it in. It had a little LCD screen, like a calculator. And then you could type a line or something and it would print it on paper. Dot matrix. <sighs> it was a thing back in the day. And, but his corner was all filled with papers and boxes and file boxes, like the ones from Office Depot. 
bit different. Because Office Depot didn't exist at this time that I'm remembering it. Because it's relatively new. They were in this house for 60 years, I think. They are already in it for quite a few before I was born, which was 1980. Now, this little corner over here in the maze of shelving that they had <laughs> was where we would sit and wrap presents for Christmas. Um, and so there were a lot of scattered um, decorations around so I could represent the area. Not necessarily because the that area had the decorations laying out like this, but it was more of a representation of the space and what it was for. And I'm just adding some things onto the shelves to fill it up and to be representative of the kinds of things that were in that basement. And putting some little wall cracks up. Scrolling through all of the things, trying to find things, and now I just randomly put gnomes everywhere. Because. Why not? I'm a weirdo. That's how it works out. I put gnomes in places and, you know, there were decorations in boxes and books and old furniture and it was just a maze of shelves. I tried to put shelves in places that there were shelves. I tried to represent this home as best as I could and sometimes I had to be literal or sometimes I was figurative. That's the front of the place. Mm, love this home. If I could ever buy it, I would totally buy it. My dream. To somehow bring it back into the family and have it and live in it. And that's It looks so much like my grandma's kitchen though. And the counter right next to the stove. Not the one that my, the microwave is on. But the one next to it is where she taught me how to make bread and how to knead it. That counter. And that's the pantry and all the things. She had this little side table in there that was actually foldable and we folded it out for holidays when we'd have like Christmas breakfast over here. And so with a very large family like we had, we had to make things work. We'd be eating on sofas and chairs and pull out tables. And I have a picture of my grandma Myers, my dad's mom, on that sofa, holding me as an infant. It's an old faded photo, but I remember it so clearly. She was the first grandparent that died of emphysema when I was 10, maybe? In my grandma's closet, which is the one pictured here, at the bottom, a couple of shelves, they had games for us kids to play. And in the closets in the hallway, when you walk in, there were boxes of those Playmobil toys and some Legos and some things. My grandma's room. It was weird. It was blue. And in the bathroom, it was pink and with a blue sink, blue green shower. So many memories. It was so vivid and so sudden that, oh my God, I have to build this thing and I built it. It's not going to be uploaded to the gallery because it's not for everybody, it's just for me. But I did want to share it with you guys anyway. And share some memories, some thoughts. 
bring you into my life a little bit with something a little bit more cheerful than I might die in a hospital because of my gallbladder. Not all of my memories are going to be good. I don't have a lot of them. My childhood was not fantastic. That's a little TV I added later. So not all of my stories are going to be good stories, but they're going to be true stories. And I will try to avoid the really bad ones. But ultimately, I make these videos for myself. And I'm happy that you get to watch them and share memories with me and commiserate. But I will tell my truth. I will tell my truth. I will tell you what is real. I will not lie to you. Not all of my memories are going to be great. Some are going to be awful. So this is like a video diary, but with speed builds. But you can always mute the sound if you just want to watch the video. I will not be offended. Another look at the basement with all of the fun things. I added rocks in the crawl space to represent the gravel. We don't really have a lot of gravel sized rock things, so I had to shrink a lot of things down. My grandpa would have cars on the side to play with. They were little like matchbox cars and stuff, little old tin cars. Wrapped up Christmas presents and packages and things in representation of what we did in that corner. It was figurative. Not that there were actually stacks of presents in that corner. Only when we were wrapping them. I hope you enjoyed this build and the jog down memory lane. Thank you so much for watching it. I am so glad to be able to share these memories with you so they don't get forgotten. I will see you on stream very soon. On twitch.tv slash the seminary may be well, happy, and peaceful, and I will see you very soon. Bye, everybody.